So I got one quick question for you. Are you ready? Yeah! I said, are you ready? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. I'm supposed to do more than that? So I want to talk to everybody real quick about the sacrifice um, and what it is and what it is more than just an IC theme. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to introduce my team. Uh, feel free to uh, mock, ridicule, point, laugh, whatever you have to do. Uh, I'm going to say a few mildly amusing things. I'm going to say something moderately inspirational and then I'm going to get finished. Does that sound good to everybody? Okie dokie, here we go. So the first person I want to introduce is Brian Miss Moore. Where are you, Brian? Come on up. <laughs> Brian is following in the footsteps, the legendary footsteps of Jamie Roy as my IC check-in lead. And let me clarify this for everybody. He has volunteered and paid for he and his staff to come here and look at your character sheets. Paid to come look at your character sheets. I, I don't get it, so st stay here. The second person I'm gonna bring up is Lana Tesler. Now, I have a bet with somebody that I can make Lana cry before the end of the weekend, so let's get started. I hired Lana a year ago to work on props, to do nothing but build stuff to make your games better. And in that entire time, Lana, would you fill me in how much prestige you've gotten? Zero. Zero prestige for a year of work on a storyteller staff where she doesn't get to do all the stuff that gives you a god complex like mine. A year of work. So please give a round of applause to Lon and her staff. <laughs> David Hoffman, come on down. David Hoffman, uh, normally his role is to run white team, which are the guys that actually get everything done. These are the guys without which all the, the important, you know, egotistical storytellers wouldn't get anything done. Nothing would happen. That's normally. This year, David is also handling all the prestige for all of my team. So what this means is he actually gets to do the job of a coordinator without the title. Where's Patrick Garrity? <sighs> Patrick Garrity is my red team lead. This means he is in charge of Atlanta when we leave it a smoldering, burning wreckage after we're gone. Why, why are you applauding that? That's, that's... You, pe you people are confusing. Patrick also thankfully agreed to take on and continue the work that, that Jim Fisher and Don Proud started in delivering a truly superb Forsaken game. So uh, this is my, this is the team, including Patrick, which uh, we'll call him, okay. I'll wait. Nice. Um, this is the team that does all of the work and doesn't get any of the awesome parts of being a storyteller. So please, when you see in the, them and their teams, please say thank you. The next two people I want to talk about, the first is Boomer. Where's Boomer? There's Boomer. Uh, the truth is, I, I don't know much about Boomer, but he ran an Irish charity event this morning, or this afternoon, uh, but he's Irish, and that's awesome. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the second, the person that's gonna be running Sabat here shortly is Rick Connolly. Uh, if anyone here or anyone in the cam is confused in any way about why Rick is the greatest person I've ever met, come find me and I'll explain it in detail to you. You guys can sit down. Thank you. <laughs> what about the rest of them? Oh, anyway, so we're going to talk about our, my venue leads. The first is Ronan McHugh. Where are you, Ronan? Come here. Ronan is also Irish, and, and that's pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, Ro Ronan is also an idea guy like me, so we come up with these amazing ideas, and then when it comes to actually doing them, that within the, that's where things go sideways. But Ronan has a vision, a passion, and a plan for Changeling that is unparalleled. So if you get a chance to come see Changeling, not only for the set, but the game this weekend, it, it will be legendary. <laughs> this is Patrick Garrity. All right, you guys can go sit down. Is Clay here yet? No. Clay Draper? <laughs> okay, so let me talk a second about Clay. When I first hired Clay, I had very clear instructions. Okay, Clay, I want a mage game where like armies of seers show up and like at 10 o'clock a big verge opens and a Cthulian monster comes out and, and there's like verge bombs. And do, you, do you know what he said to me? He said no. <laughs> I'm not a guy that takes no well. I was like, all right, I can't have that. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have like PCs fighting and then they, here's the awesome part. These two NPCs are gonna come in and they're gonna explain the plot to everybody. And the players are gonna love this, it'll be awesome. And he told me no. So I'm very, very sorry about the mage game. It's gonna, I, I, don't, I, I can't tell you how bad it's gonna be. It's going to be about discovery and the curiosity of, of people with godlike powers in an infinite space. I don't know what he was thinking. No, you don't. Um, the next person I want to bring up is uh, Stoneface himself, uh, the only man I've ever seen grudge smoke a cigarette. Christian Stevenson. Uh, Christian, uh, much like Ronan, has a vision for Requiem that is unparalleled. Um, so I can't guarantee you that you will all love him by the end of the weekend, or will be, there will be an absence of swearing, but there will be the best damn Requiem game you've ever seen. Uh, I think I got everybody. So let's get back for a second to the sacrifice. Um, the sacrifice is the I see theme this year, but more than that, the sacrifice is what people give of themselves to make the organization better. Uh, the sacrifice, it's not your MC, it's not your title, it's not what you get, it's not the things that come along with your position. The sacrifice is what you truly give of yourself to make the organization a better place. And if you look very hard, you will see the sacrifice this weekend. If you go to the auction, you'll see what I call the Brian Gates maneuver where someone will pay a ridiculous amount of money for something, win it, and then not use it on their character. You'll see it out front where people are smoking. Some guy is gonna pick up cigarette butts and they're not on groundskeeping or security because they know we wanna keep a good relationship with the hotel. You'll see some poor narrator, and this is the first time he's ever done it and he's nervous and he's in the middle of a scene with like 30 people and like Ricky Kramer staring somebody down. <laughs> And he has no idea what he's doing, but he wants desperately to give something back to a, an organization that has given him so much. That is the sacrifice. I want to ask everybody a question. I want you to think about it very hard. What is your sacrifice? What is it? that you give back to the club. This is not a rhetorical question, but because I want to invite each and every one of you 
to go to each member and ask them, what is your sacrifice? Go to Kelly and ask her how much she has sacrificed for this club. Go to the person with the purple, what are we calling Lanyards. Lanyards. The purple lanyards and ask them what they've sacrificed for this club in time and effort. No. They're new. <laughs> ask, ask each other what it is. And I want to I want to put this out there. If you honestly ask yourself, what is your sacrifice and you don't have an answer? I want you to really, really take some time to consider that. Because if you are not sacrificing anything, if you are not giving back to the club, then you are missing out on the greatest thing this club has to offer, you. Thank you everyone. <laughs>